This video is sponsored by UPDF. So if you couldn't tell already, I am a, I'm a content creator, shocker, I know, but I'm still a student and I'm not big enough to drop out and do this full time yet. And you know, being a student in the modern era, I carry and use a lot of tech with me every single day. So today I'm going to go over most of what I carry with me on a day to day basis to the USB C cables. I use to charge everything to the iPad that I use to replace every bit of paper in my bag. Let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start off with what's in my pocket, seeing as those are the things that are most critical and those are the things that kind of run my life. So starting with my daily driver phone, as if I have multiple, I've got the iPhone 15 Pro Max and I already have a full review on this phone, but um, to summarize, this is a great device. The 120 Hertz HDR 1290p display is great for reviewing footage, scrolling through Twitter and watching content. It's just a great, overall phone. The form factor of it easily fits in my pockets and it should for about 90% of you. And the battery life easily gets me through an entire school day and then some. It's obviously way better than the iPhone XR I was using beforehand. And it is the centerpiece of my life as a content creator, student and grocery store checkout worker. Particularly as a student, using my phone to scan documents to use digitally later is one of my biggest use cases for the three cameras on the back. And when I scan my documents, they usually turn into PDFs and I need to read those PDFs, I'm, sh I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. If you're anything like me, you're using PDFs almost every single day, whether you're filling out a form, reading over a resume, or reviewing a script, or literally anything in between, UPDF has the tools and the power to help you get it done right, all at a fraction of the cost of Adobe Acrobat. UPDF lets you annotate PDF documents by adding text, links, images, or any of the hundreds of stickers that are built into the app and does it all with ease while preserving the original format of your documents flawlessly. And if you don't want a PDF anymore, UPDF lets you convert your PDF documents to any of their supported formats like Word, PowerPoint, or even photos. And of course it works both ways. You can convert supported documents into PDFs, but I get it. You need truly advanced PDF features, and hey, UPDF's got you covered there as well. With OCR that lets you convert any document into a searchable and editable PDF, and built-in AI that lets you summarize, explain, write, translate, and even more with accuracy and detail. And of course, they've got all of your standard PDF reader features as well, like compression, signature support, encryption, and even more. This already sounds excellent, and it'll sound even better when I can tell you you can get UPDF Premium for 12% of the cost of Adobe Acrobat and you can buy a perpetual license because yep, that's a feature now. UPDF is dead simple to use. Works across iPhone, iPad, Android, Mac OS, and Windows, and one license gets you access across four devices at the same time. You can finally fully ditch Adobe and get rid of it out of your workflow and switch over to UPDF with the links in the pinned comment and the description and get 63% off UPDF Pro with their biggest sale of the year. Thanks again to UPDF for sponsoring this video. Okay, now that I've paid my bills, let's get back to my pockets. My earbuds of choice are the AirPods Pro 2nd Gen with the USB-C port. These are excellent headphones, and the addition of the USB-C port last September was the deciding factor for me to actually go with those instead of just sticking with my 1st Gen AirPods Pro with one of them that didn't work. You'll, you'll notice throughout this video that I am very deep into the Apple ecosystem, which if you know me personally, you'd be sick of hearing about it by now. Because of that, sticking with my AirPods for my daily driver main headphones just makes sense with all of the audio switching and spatial audio and all of those Apple exclusive features. Uh, I've tried the other side. I've tried the Android Google ecosystem. I'm not a huge fan. But the most important part of headphones are the sound. And while I'm not an audiophile, the AirPods continue to satisfy my ears the same way they did when I bought the second gen standard AirPods uh, four or five years ago at this point. I'm not covering the mug. It's from Typo. That's usually all I keep in my right pocket. And my left one is honestly pretty boring. I haven't gotten around to ordering a Ridge yet, so I'm still just carrying your dad's standard like leather dual fold wallet. I'm not gonna open that because you'll see my ID. The, the really only thing that I've done to kind of make this more tech is I've shoved an air tag inside one of the card pockets. I'm not gonna tell you which one so you don't know if you rolled me. There's an air tag on my keys as well, which are all kept in this key organizer from Orbit Key, which stops my keys from making scratches if they end up in the same pocket as anything with a screen. It was at this point I realized I was recording out of the phone microphone, not the lav mic. Oh, my bad. And it keeps the footprint of my keys relatively compact. It does make it a bit harder to attach my car key and my air tag, which is made even more annoying by the little flimsy plastic key ring that you need to attach them onto. And getting into my house does take a little bit longer because I've got to, you know, fiddle with the keys and find the right one. But I'd say it's worth that compromise for that compactness and honestly just the kind of cool factor of it. If I'm going out for extended periods of time as well, I'll also keep this MagSafe battery charger in probably my back pocket. 
Um, this is not the official one. This is from Chongmang. I'm probably butchering that. I didn't buy the Apple one because it hasn't got USB-C in it and I couldn't afford it. <laughs> it. The battery's not great, but it usually tops up my phone enough to last through a full night. And on my wrist is where the Apple Watch SE second gen lives. Well, my only real complaint about it is that the lack of the ultra wideband second gen chip, which would let me find my phone the same way I could use my phone to find my AirTags. That's really all I need. The SE2 even has a version of double tap through the quick actions in the accessibility settings. So that, I don't even want that. I just want, I just want to not lose my phone. <laughs> I switch between a lot of watch bands on this watch. Usually I'll have the green Alpine loop that I bought off Amazon for 20 bucks, or I've got this steel uh, Milanese, Milanese loop. That's usually the one I wear when I'm not working out or if I'm about to go out somewhere. I've also obviously got the rubber loop that came with the watch, uh, but I don't use that one as much. And yeah, that's it for my pockets. Uh, I used to keep heaps of things in my pockets. I had like one of a handheld, I had a pen, flashlight, cables, and even more. But I've been trying to kind of minimize what stays in my pocket specifically, just to kind of lighten up a bit. My bag is a very different story. I try to stay prepared as much as I possibly can for myself and the people around me. Uh, and you'll see that as I show you what's in it. Now I'll start with the bag itself. I go to a Catholic school. And if you've never had the experience of going to one of those before, um, good. <laughs> No, it, like, it's pretty good school, but they are very strict on uniform and accessories, particularly the bag. All that to say, I don't get a choice. I'm using this thing whether I like it or not. It's not bad, but it's not great either. I'm trying not to show the logo so I don't need to blow that later. I'd much rather be using one of the other backpacks that I carry outside of my classroom. I'm still working on grabbing one of those peak design bags that every other tech YouTuber has, so you can subscribe down the bottom if you want to help me out with that. But for now, oh, I forgot the bag. Now I've been daily driving this backpack from Globe Design. I don't know the exact model, I can't find it. Uh, this was a Christmas present, but it is a great bag. It's got plenty of options to store and access things. You've got the Velcro flip up off the top. You've got the zipper pocket at the side. You've got like a pocket down here to access it sideways. Yeah, it's really nice. And if it's not the Globe bag, I've got a promotional tote from Western Sydney University that I carry. Nothing special there. All right, and now for things you probably actually care about, what do I use outside of my phone and AirPods on a day-to-day -day basis. Starting with the tech, I've got two devices that I keep in this bag, in the main pocket, like right at the back, and um, that's it. I don't carry binders, textbooks, workbooks, anything. Go all digital, it's great. First up, I've got the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air. Uh, I've been using this since day one, and it has held up really nicely. I only really run into problems when I attempt to store more than like a few Word documents on the internal storage because I bought the base model 256 gig model. Um, I severely regret purchasing that. But honestly, I've been getting by just fine. I store most of my documents and a few select applications in iCloud Drive. And then when I edit videos, I'm using this Sabrent Nano 512 gig SSD, which helps because Final Cut uses so much space. Even the eight gigs of RAM has been all right. Like, don't get me wrong, it really comes to a halt whenever I try to run a VM or a local large language model. But um, even with my fairly heavy video workload constantly hitting the machine, it's doing great. Across both Premiere Pro and Final Cut, I've had rarely any issues editing at 1080p and 4K, usually at 60fps, with only a few occasional performance drops here and there. The only real app I had issues with was DaVinci Resolve, um, but that's clearly a very performance hungry program compared to the other two. Obviously, I'm never gonna buy a base MacBook spec again, um, but it's been a fine experience. And you'd probably have an even better experience if you weren't a video editor like myself. I'll have a full long-term review after like, what, two years it's been now at some point. So I get subscribed for that one. I currently don't have any protection for the MacBook. I'm still waiting on my d skin to arrive. Running directly alongside my Mac is my 2022 11 inch iPad Pro. I do have some regrets with this one too, not with the spec or the model or the storage, but just the fact that I bought this when Apple's likely going to release the 2024 iPad Pro this month. And I bought, I bought this in January, so you can kind of see why I'm gonna be a bit annoyed when the other one comes out. But even considering that, the iPad is still a great device. I've mainly been using the iPad for the lighter tasks that honestly would probably be a perfect fit on the MacBook Air. Things like script writing, some digital sketching, reading, and most importantly, handwritten note taking. The iPad is the driving factor to my all digital workflow in the classroom. Like, you know, sure, Google Docs, Coda, Craft, they're all good for some subjects. Like, you know, I could type up an essay really nicely, but I'm not getting my maths work done with a keyboard and mouse. And sometimes you just have to handwrite. Considering every major exam I'll ever take is going to be fully handwritten, I don't want to lose that skill just yet. 
Using the iPad in place of workbooks has been an excellent experience and the two other people I've converted have the same opinion. To get that handwriting done, I'm still rocking the MetaPen Pencil I reviewed about seven months ago in August of last year. And it's honestly still holding up, although the lack of hover support and double tap and wireless charging is much more noticeable now that I have a device that would support all of those. Along with that is an ESR matte screen protector that I've been using to get that paper-like feel. I was just using the glass screen without any screen protector, which works, but having that paper-esque feel just makes it feel a lot nicer. I had like a genuine paper-like branded screen protector that I was using on my 7th gen iPad before this, but I found that the ESR branded one works just as well. I've been keeping my eye on Astropad's rock paper pencil as well. The two parts set up with the screen protector and the custom Apple pencil tip seems really interesting. And protecting that iPad is one of the two cases I usually have on me, that being the Apple Smart Folio and the Apple Magic Keyboard. Both of these products are priced exactly how you'd expect an Apple product to be priced but both of them hold up to the build quality and the user experience that you'd also expect from an Apple product. I didn't pay full price for either of those and I probably wouldn't have bought them if I had no other option. The Smart Folio, I got for free. I bought the iPad with an education discount and they were doing a sale and it came with a gift card. So I bought this and a USB-C cable. That used up the entirety of the $160 gift card they bought me. And for the Magic Keyboard, I paid only just over a hundred bucks Australian for it on eBay in an auction, which is just a just a steal. I usually have the folio on by default. It kind of makes it feel a bit more like a notebook. And I switch the iPad over whenever I need to get some actual work done on it, using it kind of like a modern netbook. That's really it for the tech. In the other pockets, I've got, you know, the basics of a water bottle, a few pens, and whatever worksheets that I've been given throughout the day that I still haven't scanned in yet. In the frontmost pocket, I keep this cable organizer from Ugreen, uh, where I keep all my cables, usually type C ones, you know, my 30 watt power brick from Anchor, you know, my type C hub, my SSD, headphones, just kind of basic nece necessities that I tend to use every few days. And while I'm not allowed to wear them at school, the Ray-Bans typically go with me basically everywhere I go. And even when I'm at school, the case is just sitting in the frontmost pocket waiting for them to go straight back on the second I leave the building. And that's it. This video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would be, but I feel like I gave a fairly detailed overview of most of the things that I use in my day-to-day -day life. And hey, maybe hopefully you can gain some inspiration for your own EDC from this video. Thanks again to UPDF for sponsoring this video and I hope you had a good time watching it. UPDF, owned by Super Ace Software, was the sole sponsor of this video. None of the product manufacturers featured had sent over anything that was displayed in this video and none of them had any input or early previews. The only company that got an early preview of this video was UPDF. If you like this video, you know what to hit and if you really like this video, maybe even subscribe. If you want more Hades, you can click over here to watch my review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and you can click over here to check out the time I tried to control my smart home with Minecraft and it actually did work. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and basically everything else using the links on screen and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.